Hello everyone and welcome to the reboxing of Hegemony, lead your class to victory. I've played the game a number of times now and then every time my uh, reboxing kind of changed. The cards at this moment are unsleeved, but the second part of this video will have the box with the cards sleeved. Um, so I have no idea at this point in time what it's going to look like, but you will know at the end by the end of the video. Okay, so if you're a sleeper or not, you will see both uh, possibilities. And also remember, this is just a version, a way to do it. Uh, up to you how you do it yourself, of course. So I always just open it up, go through it, and then put it all back again. So you know. All right. So the reason why this is on the top is because I mostly will play the solo because it takes a while to play and it's always good to practice and so on. The solo works really well. So last time I played the working class, so that's why it's so high. So I have the cheat sheets and this on the top. And the other cheat sheets as well. And then the uh, rule book and the concepts. Okay. Then I have the uh, board, but I think all of that is pretty obvious, you know. It's, uh, but then I have this, and you might say, why do you have this? I just put this as an extra to also reduce um, the gap between the cover and the box. And also because I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep using the metal coins or not. Uh, more about that later. And also to just, it covers everything, to try to keep everything more in its uh, place, actually. Because it's slightly, uh, yeah, it just, just helps doing that. So this is one that came loose. Um, so here we have the boards then. That's all pretty self-explanatory, uh, the four different classes, right? And then this is the first thing that you will most likely encounter, and that is that the cards here. So these will always come loose. Why do they come loose? Because the bottom here has the tokens here. They always get pushed up, all right? But we'll get to that in a second. First of all, let me talk about all the baggies. Okay, I'm sitting down now. I'm going to zoom in a bit. All right. So here I have the IMF uh, intervention stuff and also the uh, solo advanced tokens and also the gears. Basically, they're all like roughly the same color. There's not many of them. That's why they're in one bag. But once again, you know, your choices might be different. Here, I basically have everything that you use in setup. So I have the two big yellow tokens, uh, which is basically for the tax and also the round. And then the black ones, uh, is the markers you use for the elections, the starting uh, positions and also throughout the game. And then these two tokens, the one with the heart and the one with the education, so health and education, these are tokens you use when certain um, policies change and the price changes. So these you're going to need these every game, so that's why I put them all nicely together. All right, then uh, also in this gap, I have the starting stuff for the middle class person. So it has the tokens. So watch out, there are five of these, but you only need to have four because the fifth one goes to the states. Okay, so four regular markers. You have your point marker. You can see that because there's a hundred at the back. You have your voting token. You have um, one health, and sorry, one food, and two health. Well, you know what? Let's just open it, and I'll show you what's inside, like this. So everything is here now. So we have the four markers. Remember, the fifth one goes to the state. You have the score marker. You have one food, one health, your voting token, and then you have five cubes that will go into your player board. Okay. Four of them have to do with price, and one of them is the prosperity marker. Uh, no, 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 not prosperity marker, but uh, let me just quickly show you to make it a little bit clearer. So one of them will go in population, and then one, two, three, four, four more, okay? So here's the money, because as the middle class, you start with 10, 30, 35, 40 Vardis, okay? So these are the coins, obviously, but you can also use the uh, cardboard tokens as well, or your own, whatever it is that you use as replacement. Okay, so that's that one. So I'll put everything back and then switch to the next one. Okay, then we have this one here, this big one. This is the states, 
Okay. All right, so that's quite a lot, as you can see. So first of all, we have four purple cubes because that is the influence that the state starts with that's on the board. Then we also have these markers. These are for the, um, what do you call it again? The name, the legi legitimacy, because they go in here, right? Um, then we have the regular voting tokens that he has, and also the score marker, um, even though uh, policy changes and so on. So here we have these tokens, they are all for the states. Uh, they might come into play, they don't come into play if the state is not played, right? The state also has their own uh, voting token, and then they start with six health and six education. And then the money is quite high. It is 50, 70, 90, 100, 110, 115, 120. So this is everything that goes into the bag for the state. Okay. So when you set up the game, you just give the state their bag and then, you know, much easier than trying to uh, divide it. Now, if the state is not playing, of course, you can remove the money if it's necessary, or uh, the m m even if the state is not playing, a lot of this stuff will still be on the board. The cues will be on the board, the money will be on the board, the education and health will be on the board, and the rest will not. Okay, so you can put that in different bags if you want as well. Okay, I will now put everything back and then go on to the next one. And then we have the working class. So in this bag, we have the following items. So first of all, your build proposal tokens, and also it is also your prosperity marker. Once again, four, not five, because the fifth one goes to the state. Your, or, um, your strike tokens, your demonstration token, your score token, your voting token, two more strike tokens. Only one cube, because for the working class, you don't have any goods that you have to price. So the cube will just go here. All right. And then the money is only 20, 25, 30. So that's it. This is the working class. So nice, and easy and quick. All right. Next one. Okay. And then we have the capitalists. All right. So the capitalists, once again, we have the voting bills and the uh, markers here, score marker. We also have the uh, voting marker. They start with two luxury and two education. Also one influence. And they also have these four markers here that go on the prices at the bottom of the board. And they also start with one food. And then money they have quite a lot of because it's also 50, 70, 18, 90, 100, 110, 15, 120. So they start with quite a lot of money as well. Yeah. All right. So that is the uh, capitalist class. And then we can move on to the next one. Okay. So the remaining baggies in that section of the box, which is the bottom right section, the way that I'm looking at it, is just all of the money. I put it there because it's heavier. So the cards will stay in their place easier. I put the 100s and the 50s together, and then we have the 20s, the 5s, the 1s, and then of course also the 10s, all right? So they're all in that part together. Then card-wise, um, you basically have an option because they're all the same size, right? So the way that I've done it is since I'm playing mostly solo, you don't use certain decks. And because I haven't used certain expansions yet, I also don't use those decks. So what I do is all the cards that are here on the right side, uh, after the rules of the classic uh, expansion or what it's called, I'll show it in a second. Those are the cards that I'm using in my single player game, in my solo game. All the cards on the other side are the cards that I'm not using, okay? So that's what it comes down to. So, for example, these cards, oh, it's the other way around, sorry. <laughs> these are the cards that I don't use, these are the cards that I do use. All right, so for example, all the cards on the right side, let's take a look at what these are. Oop. Okay, so we have the 
uh, expansion cards, okay? The, the history, the events and everything. Since I'm not using them, they're there. Um, we also have these cards, which is the political agenda, but that doesn't change because the state is not in the game, uh, unless I play the state in a solo game, but most of the time it is not in the game. These are the cards for the state. So obviously, like I said, if I play solo, I do three players, the state is never in the game. These are the solo cards for, uh, sorry, these are the regular cards for the capitalists and the middle class. But at the moment, my solo games, I'm the working class. So they are not in the game. So once again, they are on that side. And then these are the event cards for the state. Once again, state not in the game, so not necessary. Uh, yeah. And then these three cards, when you play with three people, three players, then you have to remove these cards with the double dots. So that's why they're there as well. And then everything that's after the rules, because I think this is really handy. It's like, you can use it as a divider because it's the same size as the cards roughly, but it's obviously different. So the historical events divides my cards for all the cards that I do use. So what did I put on the other side? Well, first of all, these are the uh, player aids for the solo bots. If you, this is the expansion, okay? Like if you don't have, you just have retail copy, solo is not in here. So of course, once again, you might want to order your cards differently then. Um, so it has the deck for the capitalist player, all right? The deck of buildings, I mean. Um, it also has the automa for the capitalist player, all right? But only the simple one. So these are the reference cards and uh, also the actual automa cards for the uh, capitalist player. Only the simple ones, because I haven't played with the advanced one, because simply it takes up too much space, because it's already a table hog, it just makes it worse. Um, and then we have the same thing for the capitalists, and then we have my deck for the working class, and then after that... So basically, the Ultima cards, the Ultima deck, and then my regular deck. Up, up, up. Then we have here the building deck for the capitalists. You can see it for the uh, with the yellow building, right? So these are all the buildings that the capitalists can build throughout the game. Then we have two red cards. These are cards that might come out as the working class, the cooperative farm. If you play that card, you can build one. And then these are basically these are the state cards that start at the beginning of the game. All right. Some of them are revealed. Some of them are hidden. And then. Finally, is it? Yeah, finally, we have the export cards that might come out. So those are the cards that I have there. Now imagine, I can imagine very clearly that after I finish uh, sleeving these cards, I might run out of space here. You know, that is a definitely a possibility because right now it is, it kind of fits perfectly right now, if I'm being honest. But I do find the cards to be rather annoying to uh, shuffle and to, to 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 just take them out, actually. So I think they'll be easier to handle when they are sleeved. Now, the cards are not flimsy, don't get me wrong. It's just sometimes I have to like peel them off each other, even though they're not stuck, but it's, it's, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I haven't had this experience with other cards, but uh, maybe it's a kind of quality, I don't know. Anyway. I like the cards, but I think I'll sleeve them regardless. So here we have the bag, very simple. This contains all the cubes, all the cubes, except for those that I put in different bags already. That means at the start of the game, when you're setting up, you have to remove all of them because alternatively, you could remove all of them and just keep in eight of each faction, aside from the state, of course, because you don't have it. But you might have to change it anyway if you don't if you want to play with two for example so yeah i just put everything in there it's an easy way to store them it fits in there nicely and there we go okay here is another area to put stuff now once again you want to put stuff from here in there it really doesn't make a difference okay so these are just the resources i put these two together because they're easily uh, easy to separate i have this the health okay this is still the cardboard money because I talked about the, the, the coins, right? I like the coins 
but it's much more difficult from a distance to see how much money someone has. With this, it is super easy to see how much money they have with the cardboard tokens. But the metal ones are nicer to handle. So I, I haven't decided yet. I want to play with other people, see what they say, whether or not they agree or not. Is, is the, the, the idea of the metal coins way nicer than actually being able to see how much money someone has? I don't know. We have the food. We have the markers that you use to uh, put on wages and so on. We have the people and also the people and that's it. I put them in the bigger stack because those uh, bags are bigger as well. Initially the, the people were here, but then with the coins, I like to have them all together. So they're there. All right, first I'll stay with the same size. I'll check this one here. This one is like a mix of all kinds of cards that I use or don't use. Well, actually I just use them because this is the Ultima, but this is the Ultima that I don't use because it has check and the check ones is only, are only used when you play the advanced version. So I don't use these. Then you have this one, which is uh, different types of, uh, is it events or, yeah, yeah. And then here are the extra, extra uh, events that the state does actually. But once again, these are all things that I haven't used yet, okay? You also have cards here that give you goals to, to try and fulfill. Um, yeah. So basically just everything else. So for example, small labor force, if you have up to seven, have a population of seven or less, and the game, in the game you get five points. So they're like goals for each class. Um, and you also have the Ultima, uh, but, but this is the Ultima of the working class because for now I've been playing as the worker class. So yeah. All right, so that's in here, done. And here we have the smaller cards. Now underneath, I'll talk about that first. Underneath you have the two different types of tokens. We have the uh, free tra uh, trade space for the capitalist player. Originally I thought about putting it in the baggie, but then I, I didn't, so I just left it there. And this is the extra space also for the capitalist player, right? Now, like I said, when you transport the game, these tend to rise up and push the smaller cards uh, around. This just has all the smaller cards, but once again, I kind of group them to what I use a lot or not. Like this is a loan, I use that, but everything below it, I didn't use because these smaller Ultima cards are for the more complicated Ultima, all right? It is cool, don't get me wrong. The, the advanced Ultima is really cool, but it takes up too much space, so I can't really do it, um, yeah. So, and then some more tokens for expansions and so on. The cards, I mean, not tokens. So there's just all of these I basically don't really use except for the loans on the top. These cards I do use. You have the migration cards, okay? The back looks like this, all right? And then this one is the um, business deals cards that you use, which is the handshake symbol. Those are the only two that are there. Okay, so that's basically how I uh, reboxed my game. I think the biggest or most important part, of course, is grouping the starting uh, items together for uh, all the different classes. That helps a lot in setup. Um, and aside from that, yeah, if you know what game you're going to play in advance, if you know, okay, we're playing with three people, the state is not playing or whatever, or we're going to play with expansion or not, you can already group your cards in a way that it makes it a lot easier to set up. You just like, okay, these I'm using, the other ones I'm not. I don't have to mess around, right? But once again, uh, the world is your oyster. You choose whatever you want to do. If you want to do it differently, then go ahead and do it differently. Um, the boards go in here, all right? Nice on top. Like, like I said, with the coins, I still have it like this um, because it could have some value strategy-wise. Then the uh, rule books go on there as well. And then everything else. And you can see now there is some space between, I, mean, I don't know if you see it that clearly, there is some space between the, the top, um, but not a lot. But if you remove the other cardboard, then alternatively, you can punch everything out uh, and then just put the cardboard underneath the tray at the bottom and then you uh, basically achieve the same result. But anyway, this was the reboxing of hegemony. 
I feel a bit sad that I closed it now because actually I'm going to play solo after this immediately and now I have to unbox it all again. All right, welcome back everybody. So I just finished playing and also sleeving all the cards. So let's see what it looks for, like now. So first of all, everything stays the same. Okay, on the top, everything stays the same, the board and everything. This is still here as well. And then you see the big difference. This is all sleeved. These are all the cards. Okay, all of them are still using this as a um, divider, the rule book. So these are the cards I'm using. These are the cards that I don't use when I play with three players. Of course, there will be things changed. For example, these are the cards for the working class, which I'm playing with now. But if I'm going to play with the uh, middle class, for example, then this deck would be here and this would be there. But anyway, details. So what it looks like now is this is still the bag with cubes, but underneath I have the money. All right. Still works, kind of. This is all the same. Only difference here is this, these two were put on top. I made this flatter than usual, and this two. So it only takes up a little bit of space, right? Here, this is just on top as well. Try to make it a little bit flatter. And actually, no, this part here was empty uh, because normally I had these cards, so I emptied it. And now the uh, all the different um, classes are in here. Okay, so this one here is the state. And then we have the working class and the capitalist and so on. That's all in here. And then this is just the food. And then I have these. These are also sleeved, right? Um, and I only sleeve the ones that I'm pretty sure I'm going to use. For example, I did not sleeve the Ultima cards here for the advanced mode because I don't think I'll ever do it because I don't have the space. And even then the simple mode actually works really nicely. So I don't see the need uh, at the moment. And also if I do sleeve them, these two decks would probably pile out. So yeah, basically there's a difference with sleeved cards uh, compared to non-sleeved. Uh, so I'm gonna keep it now because like I said before, it's so much easier to shuffle when they are sleeved. Okay, so that is the end of the reboxing of hegemony hopefully you were able to learn from this and uh, maybe made your own changes i don't know do let me know in the comments it could also always be interesting anyway that's it my name is joachim and always will be so so many games all the time i'll see you next time Bye bye <laughs>